another way to check the validity of the instrument. And then the reliability, not only Chromebox Alpha. So let us run the validity now. It will run and then it will come here and produce the result for us. <laughs> now, colleagues, look at this. So you can see the model validity measures. And that is why in most studies, when I review papers for, when I see papers for review, I will simply ask you, where is the model fit measure? You have the CR, which is composite reliability. And then you have another form of reliability, which is AVE, Average Variance Extracted. So, and then you have your discrete, this, you have your discriminant validity, DV. Why do we have problem? You can see that we have problem. You can see them written uh, in red colors. Why do we have them in red colors? So colleagues, when you go and run Chromebook Alpha, and you said, because you've run Chromebook Alpha, your, your, your scale is meeting, is, is loading well, you have met 0 0.75, therefore, you can go on to test the hypothesis. And then you have gone to expert to validate your instrument for that, you are good to go. Please, I hope you are seeing what I'm seeing here tonight, that you must have to check the validity measures. And this data is telling us that we have validity concerns. The AVE for placement is less than 0 0.5. Try improving item 26. So generally, generally, the scale that we have, that the model that we have, the scales that we have, we have problems. So colleagues, at this point, I want us to know that having, having gone this far, the next thing you might need to do is to suspend this study and go back to and recollect your data to have something that will, if you have achieved this particular point, what will simply happen would have been that um, Emos would have simply told you, congratulations, you have no validity concerns. And everything here will be looking pretty good. You will not, you wouldn't have seen these red colors. So because we are seeing these red colors means that we have these concerns here. Colleagues, at this point, do we have questions? I'm willing to take your questions before I move further to the last part, please. Okay, thank you. Thank you for uh, this uh, eye-opening tutorial. I want to say, um, how do I get plugins? Because I discovered uh, why you were doing that. I was using a data set also in my system. When I clicked on that plugin, I couldn't see most of the things. Okay, please let me let me let me let me take you back to Emos so that you can see the plugins again. Uh, yeah. Uh, let me take you to the plugins so that you can actually see the plugins again. Share. Uh, yeah. Okay. I think I'm here. And let me, so you can see a lot of plugins I have. <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. So there are a lot of plugins I have here. Okay, you know what? So what you, where you will need to, you, you need to Google, uh, for example, specific bias tests, uh, model validity, uh, validity and reliability, pattern matrix builder, and the model indirect effects, curve, growth curve model, you want to run that, you know, but these are, and then, you know, there are a couple of studies I can do using Airbus. Maybe another day we'll talk about how you can run measurement invariance test. Okay. Now, where you can get this particular uh, um, um, plugins is from James, James Gaskin's uh, website. It's called StatWiki. StatWiki website. If you go to StatWiki website, you are going to uh, get those plugins, okay? Okay, so can we go on, colleagues? Yes, we can. Okay, I want us to now, now, even though that we have not met, even though that we have not met the model fit, okay? We can actually go on to, I want to demonstrate to us how we can run analysis using this model, supposing that we have met the model fit, okay? 
Okay. Now, uh, this is what you might you might call uh, path analysis. That some some people will begin to ask. So what I need to do is that I'll come to view um, interface. I will come to this point. I will select. Okay. Now I will remove the covariates. So I'll remove the covariates. So I hope we can actually see the. So um, what I will do is that I will come here. Uh, sorry. So what I will do is that I will select all of them so that I'll be able to move them once and for all. So I want to show in my analysis how all of them are loading, all these things are loading at once. Okay, there are two ways to run your analysis. You can run the analysis using path analysis. You can also run analysis without, you can run analysis like as it is now, you can actually try to test your hypothesis like it is. Or you might decide to now draw the path using this um, observed variable, drawing observed variable, just draw the observed variables and test. I'm going to show you the both ways, okay? So can be, just be coming down. So what we do now is I will draw this up. Simply take it up. Then come here. If I want to test hypotheses, even though we did not meet the model feature, I just want to show you how you can run your structural equation modeling, same path analysis using, assuming that we have achieved the model fit and all the psychometric properties achieved. Um, colleagues, Please note that when I talk about psychometric property, I am simply talking about this. When I talk about psychometric properties, this is what I mean by psychometric properties. Okay, these validity, validity measures, this is psychometric properties. Some journals, will, some authors report the HTMT analysis as well. Any of them you want, this, this, this is the, these are the, uh the the references to them okay if you want you and bantler if you want hessler anyone you want okay any of these criteria you want uh okay now so uh so these are the psychometric properties so when i when i always mention in our forum uh psychometric properties always know that i'm referring to uh uh, I'm referring to, sorry, I'm referring to the validity and reliability measures, okay? And then let me show you in a paper where it has been reported so you don't get confused about this uh, as well. Uh, for example, in this particular paper, you can see where it has been reported. So you see these are, uh, for this particular item, parental, this particular variable, parental informational support, you can see these are, this is the model fit assuming I met the model fit, okay? Assuming I have met the model fit. So these are these psychometric properties, validity and reliability values. You can see that the CR, that is composite reliability, average variance extracted, the value, discriminant validity, the value, and then the Kronbach's alpha value at time one, time two, and time three, okay? So it depends on the type of study that you want to conduct. So let me get back to what we are doing. So please note that uh, so you don't get confused when somebody talks about psychometric properties. So this, this is what the person is referring to. So let me get back to Amos. Uh, so let me get back to Amos. So at this point, I just want to make my study look pretty good. Uh, so I simply make my model, my model like this, and, and possibly rotate it a little bit. Okay. Uh, then I can draw it up, take it up, okay, so at this point what we need to do now is that um, we simply have to come here and then draw our paths. So we want to test relationships now. The hypothesis now, for example, 
um, if you say that work placement learning will significantly enhance leadership skill, as mean this is our dependent variable, okay? Uh, then that self-efficacy will enhance leadership skill and that work placement learning will also enhance learning self-efficacy as well. So what we have now is a typical mediation analysis where um, work placement learning has a direct relationship to, uh, to um, uh, leadership skill and self-efficacy to leadership skill, and then um, and then and then and then uh, and then we have the effect of work placement learning. To this. Okay, let me also make it to uh, let me let me let me make it look good so it doesn't confuse you. So I'll come to another. I'll say work placement learning. I'll come here. Efficacy here, leadership. Okay, so what are okay? Efficacy. So here, uh, what I need to do is I simply highlight. And the span, okay. So, um, so I think I think that's looking pretty good. So, um, so at this point, you can see now the next thing we need to do is to drop our error terms, okay? We drop our error terms, okay, and then we come to the plugins and name unobserved variables okay or if i want i can say error one Let's say error two however i want it disturbance three no 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 sorry 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 Sorry, 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 please, please, please. This is going to go. So we are going to have only error one because, uh, okay, let me make it a little bit, uh, um, hold on, let me make it a little bit, one, two. Okay, so at this point, let me make it clear that this is our independent variable. Okay, so we have we need to have two error terms. Uh, I can just have error one here, and then I'm going to have error two. Okay, error terms two. So, so you put these errors where the variables where your independent variable. So automatically, our self-efficacy here becomes our mediator, a mediator variable in this particular case. All right, so, and I will say, I will say, okay. Now, I will come to, because I have now decided, I want to see the effect, the relationship, I will come to analysis property. I will go to bootstrap thing. And then I will set this, I can decide to set it at 2,000. I can set it at 1,000. I can set it at 5,000 as I want. Then I'll come to bias corrected. I'll put it at 95% confidence interval. I'll come to the output. I'd like to see the squared, the squared multiple correlation, which is the R square value. Okay. For example, you want to see the R square value. I want to see the R square value, which means I like to know how uh, when the when the independent variable work placement learning influences uh, self-efficacy and leadership skills, how does it okay now how does it uh, influence each of them uh, what is the level of variance explained in the analysis okay so i will i will check that and i want to see the the direct and the indirect effect something like that okay now 
<coughs> you see? So at this point, what I need to do is I will run MOS and see because it's, it's always prone to uh, disturbance. So let's see whether MOS can run. Oh, pretty good. It runs. So, because we have, assuming that we have achieved the model fit, what it simply means is that we are still making use of that model fit measure, okay? So, uh, so let us look at, let us view the relationships here. So, you can see uh, unstandardized, under unstandardized um, regression analysis. So, this is the output that you're going to see. And most is going to show you all the variables. You know, so I'm also going to show you all the variables here. You know, so uh, yeah, so so this is so this is this. Um, take this here. So so you can see that. But if we go to view tests, if we if we check the the standardized value, so you can see the relationships that we are having 0.51 as the regression better weight of the effect of work placement learning on leadership skill. And then we can see that the effect of work placement learning on self-efficacy is 0 0.61. And then the effect, the, the effect of self-efficacy to uh, leadership skill is 0 0.26. So, but we don't know yet whether they are statistically significant until, <laughs> until we go to see um, uh, the view test, okay? until we go to see the view test. Now, um, in this particular case, what we need to do is simple. We will go to view test to see. On the model feed, remember that we only met CFI and IFI, and then the RM, uh, the, the root main square, the RM SCA was terrible because it was just 0 0.08, wasn't really good. You know, we didn't meet the, the threshold. So we actually met uh, just a very few threshold. We met this, chi square divided by degree of freedom, and then and then uh, the incremental fit index and then uh, comparative fit index. So to collect with index wasn't wasn't good. So we need to go to the estimates, go to Scala, we go to uh unstandardized weight. Okay, sorry, we go to standardize them because, because, because we run the bootstrap. So we want to base our findings on the standardized regression better weights. So we put, once we put our, 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 our bootstrapping confidence interval here, it tells us those that are statistically significant. So at this point, um, you can see our values here. Okay. You can see our values here. These are the values. These are the scales. These are the factors. The three of them: work placement learning, so learning self-efficacy. You can see 0 0.61, the lower band and the upper band. You can see that zero did not fall between the norm. You can see that this is positive even at the lower band. This is positive at the upper band. So we have the p-value statistically significant. You can see 0 0.001. Okay, and then you can see also uh, at this point that that uh, placement, that is work placement learning, influence statistically. We have a statistically significant effect here on leadership skill. Okay, on leadership skill. So which means, um, yeah, the regression better word, which is the estimate, is is zero point five one. And then the upper and the all lower band, the lower and the upper band, you can see that we have a significant effect here. But unfortunately, unfortunately, you can see that self-efficacy here had no, we can, it had no positively statistically significant, something like that. Does not have a positive influence, okay? Has no positive influence on leadership skill. So you have our better weight estimate, 0 0.26. Now you can see that the zero falls between the norm, the lower and the upper band. You can see this is negative and this is positive. And so here we have 
zero point one one. So this is this is not statistically significant because this is this is above zero point zero five or zero point zero zero one statistically uh, significant uh, um, uh, um, um, level. Okay. So this is basically how you can run your regression uh, if you want. Now for the for the so this these are the results that you need to report in your study. So you simply report these ones. Okay. Uh, these ones you don't need to report them. They will always be statistically significant because these are from your factors to your items. So you don't actually need to report this one. You only need this. You just want to show how all of them are loaded. You know, some people remember that some people will simply uh, like in most studies that want to show the path analysis, the path diagram. You simply copy this study. You simply copy this here. Uh, go to copy. Go to Microsoft Word in your study, for example, and then you click first. 